Welcome. Hello. Welcome to another tarot reading with the Empress of Fortune. We are going to be answering a very important question today. And that question is, what do you need to resolve before you can move on to your next chapter? So with this being Patreon and me just loving you guys as much as I do, we're actually going to have six piles. Yes, I did say six piles. So pile one right here is the four of cups. And pile two right here is temperance, but it is reversed. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but that is a temperance card. Pile three right here is six of cups. There's a lot of cups in here because even temperance has cups in it. But pile three here is six of cups. Pile four is the moon. Pile five is the six of swords. And pile six is the knight of wands. That might actually be the page of wands. That is the page of wands. Excuse me. The page of wands. <laughs> Sorry about that, you guys. So pile six here is the page of wands. You can choose more than one pile if you feel called to more than one pile feel free to go ahead and take a look at it. We're going to be looking at several different things. The way the reading is going to go, I'm actually going to use the same deck for all of them. Um, we do have multiple decks happening still, though, just to give us more insight, but those are all going to be Oracle decks. So this is the Murder of the Crows Tarot. I will be using this deck for every pile. We're also going to be using messages from the mermaids to help us sort out some of the feelings. We're going to be using the Lunar Nomad Oracle, and that is going to help us figure out how we can travel beyond what it is that we're already doing emotionally. And we also are going to have the Lace Vampires deck, and that's going to let us know kind of what's draining us before we move into this next chapter. So each pile will get all four decks, don't worry but the piles will be very different. And as always, of course, I'm going to be doing my handy dandy lip bowl that will let you know at the beginning of the pile if there's any sort of special significance for you through the slips. And we'll be using the slips as well for divination. So go ahead, pause the video if you need to, take your time and choose your pile or piles, and I will see you at the timestamp. Alrighty, if you chose pile one with the four of cups, then this is going to be your reading. I did pre-pull our oracle cards. I have not yet shuffled the tarot for us. But first, as always, we're actually going to use our special lip cup to see some identifiers. Now, these are not the be all end all to tell you if this pile is for you or not, but I would say, you know, one or more of these could or should be significant to you, relevant to your life in some way. So pile one, who is most likely in pile one? Who are the people in pile one? Let's find pile one. What are some things Pile 1 would recognize or find significant, Spirit? Anything else? Anything else? All right. So we have, with our slips, oh, this one's kind of hard to open, Satsuma, that is a citrus fruit, Sinna, that reminds me of Cinnamon, but that's a character from The Hunger Games. He was like a fashion designer for Katniss. We have Breaking Free by Zac Efron and Vanessa Hudgens from High School Musical. I don't actually know if that was like their voices singing, but who knows, whatever. <laughs> Dupe, that could be makeup or it could be trickster. Romance novel. Maybe you really like romance novels with dupe. You might like try, spend a lot of time trying to find dupes, stuff like that. Um, Clumsy by Fergie. Clumsy cause I'm falling in love. 
so in love with you all right earrings you might love jewelry you might have a lot of earrings you might have a lot of ear piercings you might be considering getting your ears pierced we've got new blood and then that's also like the title subtitle of the new dexter series um new blood could mean anything to you but i don't know why i felt called to put that in there but maybe you're a fan of dexter fourth of july that is american independence day but if you are not in the usa it could just be your country's independence day if you have one ruffles chips or fabrics you might like wearing ruffled things or eating ruffles chips stuff like that ballet slippers opi that is like not only a shoe for ballet but it's also a nail color by the company opi so you might wear that nail color a lot you could also be into ballet it doesn't mean you have to do ballet you might just enjoy watching ballet stuff like that or like classical music we've got oklahoma here interesting nick miller from new girl new girl is a tv show nick miller is a character that was played by jake johnson he was a bartender slash writer slash lawyer the gambler by kenny rogers that is a song he says you gotta know when to hold him gotta know when to fold him we have atvs those are like four wheelers they're not cars but they are like um little rovers that you can use to just like drive around rooftop pool interesting that's coming out um rooftop pool maybe you have one in your building maybe you really like to go to rooftop pools especially in the summertime we've got tupac keep your head up that is a song tupac is a rapper was a rapper energy by drake that is also a song drake is a rapper he is from canada all right so these are your identifiers. If any of these are significant to you, then that does mean that this is gonna be your reading. But like I said, it doesn't have to be that you find one of these um, significant. Just stick around and see. And if you don't like the reading, if it doesn't resonate with you, you can always go and find another one because there are five others. So yay, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, pile one, let's get into it so you chose the four of cups that tells me that you are in a period of maybe some inaction some dissatisfaction some boredom with your current life or lifestyle we're going to check in with the oracles in a little bit but i'm going to actually get our tarot out first and then we'll see how the oracle cards inform the tarot reading so spirit pile one what do they need to resolve before they move on or access the next chapter or season of their life let's go ahead and shuffle these the casino way i don't really know if it's if it's called the casino way or not sorry guys um if the camera shakes a little bit um but yeah i just called it the casino way. um what does pile one need to resolve there we go We've got the Eight of Swords, so there's definitely some, again, feelings of being stuck and some insecurity, some negative thoughts that are causing insecurity for you. We have the Three of Coins, Three of Pinnacles, so that could be around work specifically. I'm going to move these down here over to the side. We've got the Four of Wands in reverse, so this is making me feel like there might be like a group of people and you kind of feel like you don't get along with them or you don't belong with them. There's something that you're not totally happy with with your work situation. Um, we've got the Knight of Swords here in reverse. There might be like some slander or gossip going around in the workplace. And I think that you might feel kind of like stuck at your job. If you do, that's too many cards. I'm sorry. I'm not going to read really all of those. We don't have time for all of that. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. If they're important, they'll come back out. Sorry, guys. <laughs> we just had like 25 cards come out. All right. What else can you tell me about pile one? What do they need to resolve before they can move on to or access the next chapter of their life? Anything else for pile one? All right, well, we can make it work with just these. Fine. Yeah, I'm definitely seeing that there is a feeling of being an outsider 
to a degree and also maybe feeling like they put too much on you and kind of expect it to be done maybe a little bit more quickly than like you're able to do. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and leave these alone. Um, with this Knight of Swords here, especially in the reverse, I think that you intellectually identify with the work, but there's no passion and there might even be like a lot of anger or even dare say hatred towards it. The Four of Wands in reverse is not necessarily a negative card. It's usually actually a pretty happy card. It can talk about like a party, a celebration, something like that. It might be, um, I'm thinking of that episode of The Office. I'm not like a huge Office fan, but I remember this episode where they were having a party and they asked all of the women in the office to plan the party, even though that's like, you know, they're not getting paid any extra to plan the party. It's not part of their duties or anything like that. Um, but they, you know, put them on this whole committee and the committee had to come up with these ideas and somebody felt left out. So then they went and like did their own committee and decided they were going to have a competing party. It was like a whole thing. But I feel like they're asking you at work to do more than what you're supposed to do. And they're expecting it in like kind of an absurd amount of time. Um, and you definitely are not feeling it. You definitely don't feel like doing it. I think that you would much rather do something creative, um, maybe something with your hands. Sculpting for some reason is like really coming out to me right now. I think it's because of the way that um, this this person is holding this like little pickaxe here with their mallet. And that mallet is also making me think of like a judge. So like maybe something legal. The Knight of Swords in reverse, that can also be pointing to something. Um, legal or maybe like data data science or something like that um but yeah i do feel like at one point you were really happy with your choice of being in this place but things have kind of taken a turn for the worse and you're not super feeling like feeling super comfortable there you're feeling like you're a little bit inadequate you're not feeling stuck you're also feeling down on yourself and like people i'm also getting the sense that like people might be picking on you it might be that you don't really know people are picking on you it might be behind your back kind of thing but like I'm kind of getting the sense that that might be what's happening so let's go ahead and take these cards here and let's see what else you need to resolve before you can move into your next chapter I'm gonna go with which ones should I go with first I'm gonna go with the emotion cards first all right so we have patience and then we have dreaming yeah the four of cups is a very dreamy card it's like you're Remind, it reminds me of Alice in Wonderland, how she's like dreaming, you know, underneath the tree. Um, and this is like you daydream about doing something else while you're at your job. <laughs> you're definitely daydreaming about doing something else while you're at your job. But you kind of feel like you just need to like wait until the right time comes before you can leave and go do what it is that you really want to do. I don't know if that's the case and it might be that you need to resolve your um resolve yourself towards actually making this come true and so like using resolve in a different way than we were using it before in the initial part i was using resolve as like what do you need to complete what do you need to um you know have come to an end before you can move on to the next chapter now i'm using it in terms of like having resolve resolve meaning um determination confidence the ability to see something through right so i think that this is telling you that you need to actually have resolve to make your dream come true okay um let's see what else we have this is going to be from the lunar nomad oracle here we have key number 33 we actually have a three right here as well so 333 is showing up um <clears throat> with the key card here not only is that making me think of like you need a key or a key card to get into the building or to get into the room but it's making me think of like there is a key player or a key piece of information that you need before you can move forward okay we're gonna actually read a little bit out of the book that comes with this because i think that it's necessary for this um so yeah let's get into that in a little bit later but for now i want to look at the vampires we have immortal 
That says the consuming family or pressure of peers. Ooh, definitely with this four of wands, we can get peer pressures being in the reverse for sure. Um, yeah, I think it might be that you have people in your life. Those could be people at your work or in your family who are kind of making you feel like you can't get out of this situation. You kind of feel like you are holding everything together, even though it's not your dream to be doing this here. It's interesting because this imagery here on the immortal card is very, very similar to the four of cups imagery. It's like this person with a cup next to them kind of just like looking despondently at this cup. <laughs> and they're like, this cup is empty. You know, there's nothing left for me here. Um, I need to get up and get to fill up my cup with something else. So yeah, let's go ahead and read this key number 33. But with 333 here, that's like very much like a work card. I'm definitely getting work vibes for sure. Oh my God, I opened it straight to the page. That's crazy. All right. So key number 33 is doorways moving forward, being locked in or out, offering the go ahead and solutions. Interesting. The key to the kingdom is in your hand. You've been granted passage into untold wonder and untapped potential. Your palm tingles with anticipation at what you might discover on the other side. And also um, in some traditions, people say like if your palm itches or your palm's tingling, it means that like new money is on its way to you. So it could be that like as soon as you decide to make this leap and decide like, I don't have to sit here and take this anymore. I actually can have my dream. Then you'll actually get some new money. That would be cool. You could stand at the gate or bravely go inside. The key to success and opportunity is a state of mind. When you decide you are a welcomed guest on the royal road, treasures appear in your path. Pathways open for you to experience your magic and potential. Your unique expression of divine energy is the key to your desires, dreams, and aspirations. What doors do you wish to open? What opportunities are you waiting for? Success is the gift of the unapologetic few that go for their dreams. There we go. Fortune favors the bold, so stop waiting for an invitation when you have the key in your hand. Literally, like, how crazy is that? They're saying, like, dreams, stop waiting for an invitation. Waiting implies patience, right? When you have the key right there in your hand. Know your worth and completely commit yourself to thriving in this life. The universe wants you to have all the blessings you can dream of. You have an unlimited supply waiting for you. Tenacity is the key to change. Tenacity and resolve are kind of like synonyms here. Oh my gosh. Sometimes I amaze myself, you guys. Um, it is easy to fall into the trap of believing that you need someone else's permission or approval, but the power is yours alone. If you decide you're meant for a certain position in life, then go for it. You cannot convince anyone else if you can't convince yourself first. The key is the unshakable knowing that you are worthy of joy and abundance. All right, so I'm going to stop reading there. There is a little bit more, but this is just like really echoing a lot of the things that I was saying earlier. You know, you might be waiting for somebody else to help you with something or give you the go ahead to say like, oh, it's okay, you can leave your job, I'll take care of it, blah, blah, blah. But like, you know what? I'm not telling you like, hey, you should quit your job. I'm not saying that. You take from this reading what you will. I don't know your circumstances. You know, I don't know your family situation. But if you are feeling like you have a dream and you want to follow that dream, the universe wants to help fulfill that. Okay, so sometimes we just have to take a leap. We have to have confidence. We have to have resolve. And we have to understand that like sometimes waiting is actually like the worst thing that you can do. Okay, um, because life is short. And if you spend all your time waiting, you could end up waiting forever, you know, um, and that's what this immortal is. It's like this idea of waiting forever and like just being stuck, stuck here forever in the same space. Okay, pile one, that is your reading for the day. Thank you so much. If you f did feel drawn to any other piles, you are definitely um, encouraged to go and check them out. I invite you to go and check them out. Thank you for being here with me. Thank you for subscribing. I really, really love and appreciate you. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.
All right, welcome pile two. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for subscribing. I am just so excited. If you chose the temperance card that was here in reverse, then that means that this reading is for you. I did pre-pull your oracle cards already, but I am going to live shuffle the tarot cards for you, so don't worry about that. We're going to go ahead and get some identifiers for you out of our handy dandy lip bowl. Let's see, um, I would say at least one of these should resonate for you, but it doesn't have to necessarily. And if you don't like any of them, or if you get into the reading and you feel like it's not for you, then there are five other piles you can go check out. So feel free to do that. Pile two, who is here in pile two, Spirit? Who is here in pile two? What are the identifiers for pile two? Pile two's identifiers, are there any more? Anything else for pile two? All right, that's it. Anything else? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yay. All right, so we've got lemongrass. That is like a scent. It's an herb. I've definitely seen it as the name of like a Thai restaurant before. It could be anything to you. I don't really know, but you know, these are for you. They're not for me. Um, Swing Swing by the All American Rejects. That is a song. Swing, swing, swing from the tinkles of my heart. We got um, Earth signs, Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo. So that could be your Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, maybe your North Node. If you're cross watching, or like maybe you're in a, a significant relationship with somebody who's a Capricorn, Taurus, or Virgo, that might also um, resonate, especially since we do have A Fine Romance here by Judith Sills, PhD. That's a book all about courtship, so that does make me think that you might have, like, a partner or a love interest who's a Capricorn, Taurus, or Virgo. We've got Amber. That is a song by 311. That could just be somebody's name. It is also the name of a couple of people from Love is Blind. That was Love is Blind, Amber, season one. Season four, also, there was somebody named Amber on Love is Blind. We've got Give Me Something Real by Ashford and Simpson. That's a song. This is definitely making me think this is gonna be like a love related pile <laughs> with all these loves. Las Vegas, maybe you're taking a trip to Las Vegas. Maybe you're from Las Vegas, <clears throat> excuse me. Maybe um, your favorite movie is set in Las Vegas. It could be a whole thing. The Good Place TV show. Maybe Las Vegas is like your favorite place. <laughs> but The Good Place is a TV show starring Kristen Bell. Sorry about that, guys. Give me one second. Sorry about that, guys. I was making some tater tots and the oven went off. All right, let's see. We also have DJ Tambi from Ink Master. Ooh, he is like a three-time Ink Master or something crazy. He's definitely one Ink Master the most. He's a tattoo artist. Um, the Climb by Miley Cyrus. That's a song from the Hannah Montana movie. Sorry, that's my dog. He really wants me to play with him. <laughs> Bob Marley. Bob Marley. He's a Jamaican singer in the reggae reggae space. You guys definitely probably know who Bob Marley is. All Black Everything. And then last but not least, we have We're Going to Be Friends by the White Stripes. Okay, so based off of this alone, I'm definitely getting that this could be like a romance type of reading. Remember, we're talking about what do you need to resolve before you move on to your next chapter. And it might be that like there's a romance that you kind of thought was going to go somewhere, but you just end up being friends. I don't really know, but that's that's a vibe. I'm getting I'm getting that vibe right now. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next part of the tarot reading. All right, pile two. Let's get into your tarot. So we already have the temperance card here reversed. We're going to check the rest of the deck and see what comes out. Spirit, oh, you know what? Uh, I wanna relight my little candle. All right, lighting this candle for connection to spirit, thank you. Yeah, there we go, okay. Um, what is it that Pile 2 needs to resolve before they can move on to their next chapter, the next season of their life? Pile 2. Pile 2. What is it for Pile 2? 
thing to resolve. There we go. All right. So we've got the Ten of Pentacles. Interesting. The Sun reversed. Judgment. King of Cups. Ooh. Okay. I'm getting it. I'm getting the message now. Um, I don't. Does this card want to come out? Yeah. We got the star here. All right. So we're gonna have to talk about some daddy issues. <laughs> That's just what it is. We have to talk about some daddy issues because, yeah, this has to do with um, issues with your with your padre. Especially we got two kings here. We have the king of cups and the king of swords. And the king of swords is here in reverse. So we got the star, king of swords in reverse, and we got the world. So this is about letting you know that like no matter, regardless, like any issues that you may have with your dad, with your father. And if you had like maybe a single mom and your mom acted as your father, this could also, you know, apply in certain um, areas to that as well. But Sorry about that pile two, my um, camera died. So we're back. Um, but yeah, I was just saying that like, you know, your relationship with your dad might not be its best and this could be whoever um, raised or didn't raise you that was, you know, like supposed to be the male father figure. So it could be like a stepdad, it could be a grandfather or something like that. Whether this person was present or absent you know, the relationship I'm just getting like was not necessarily the best, okay? You guys did not gel. You may not have had a ton of things in common. It may have been that you spent a lot of time trying to fit into the idea of like what your dad wanted for you or wanted you to be or just like the types of things that they liked to do. You might have tried really hard to do those things with them. Um, and I am getting that like you do kind of wish that it was different and like parts of your childhood, even if you may have had a pretty overall kind of happy childhood, there may have been parts that were just not so great. And those parts may have had to do with your father, um, again, whether absent or present. And so, what I'm getting is that you are doing fine without them. Whether they're in your life, whether you're in contact with them, whether you're not in contact with them, whether you grew up with them or didn't, you're doing fine without them. You have the world at your fingertips. You have so much to hope for and to look forward to. And you don't need this like negativity in your ear of like wishing that your relationship with them were different. Okay, um, I'm definitely getting that this person may have been very critical towards you. They could have been very, very cold, um, very manipulative, you know. Um, and then there also could have been times when they were very loving. This person, I'm definitely getting like narcissistic tendencies where they know how to charm people and um you know do nice things and be nice but then like underneath it all they're actually like a very cold and calculated type of person okay um yeah there might be like some issues in terms of money or like family legacy and you know what honestly like to say you have to resolve this in order to move to your next chapter. I understand how things like this can like last not only a lifetime, but several lifetimes. Like if you have children, maybe your children, or if you want to have children, maybe they won't get to know your father, right? Maybe um, the relationship between you guys or between them and you could end up being strained or you might have worries about becoming like your dad or showing traits that are like your dad. You know, um, I think you have to recognize that like you're your own person and that you have the power and the ability to to change the the family legacy and the family um, dynamic if you want to. And you can't let things from your childhood hold you back. There are so many major arcanas here. We have temperance. We have the sun. We have judgment. We have the star. We have the world. Right. And 
all of those are actually like in the later half of the major arcana out of the 21 cards. They're all towards the end. So I just want to say that like, even if you felt like this person was or is judging you, you have the ability to be the final judge in this situation and to say like, well, I am going to allow this to control my life or I'm not. And I am going to perpetuate this legacy or I'm not. So with that being said, I definitely see you choosing to go your own way here with the um, with the world card here. We have these two wands that they're holding in their hands and it's just like, you have the, the ability to pass the baton down through def several, several generations, even if you don't want your own kids. You know, you can do it through your nieces and nephews if you have siblings or through, you know, your cousins or just children in the community if, you know, you don't have anybody like that. You have the ability to change the narrative. And I love that for you. That's so lovely. Okay, so we're going to take a look at these to see what else we've got. I'm actually going to go with these cards first. So these are mermaid cards. They're emotions. Gentleness. Interesting. And we've got like a merman here, which there aren't that many mermen in the deck. <laughs> so definitely interesting that he came out to, to hang out with us. We've got love. Mm. So yeah, this person may not have been like the gentlest um in terms of like the love that they showed you when you were a child. I'm gonna move these up to make a little bit more space. And you know, I think that you're looking for more gentleness in your life. And I definitely can see how this would affect the relationships that you have with other people. Sorry about the glare there, you guys. Um, I can definitely see how this would affect your relationships with other people and with other men, whether you are heterosexual or not. You know, um, I can definitely understand that so this is definitely going to be like about being gentle with yourself and loving on yourself we've got blessings here i'm gonna keep that down there and blessings just is reminding me of what i was saying like you have the ability to change the narrative and to bless the next generation in a different way than like the way that your parents blessed you right um we have decisions there we go with that two of wands energy like i was saying she's got two wands here we don't actually have that card but the imagery is and the it's like resonant here um decisions definitely having to make a decision as to like are you going to let that hold you hostage or are you going to you know move forward turn away there we go turning away from all of this and like your father could have turned away from you it might be like i said if you are you know no contact it might be that like your dad doesn't reach out to you as much as you want them to right especially like if you know them i know sometimes it's different like and if they don't know you exist right <laughs> there's a difference there but if they do know about you and they're still really not contacting you like that can be really hurtful we've got relaxation I'm definitely feeling this whole like this whole relaxation vibe we have with the star here and even with this judgment card here because we do have you know like the graveyard it's like final resting place right um you know some of you guys may be needing to make peace with a dad or a loved one who is like passed on and it may be that like there's no way that you can change what happened between the two of you so you kind of just have to make the decision to like let it go and move forward and to understand and like be gentle with not only yourself, but to be gentle with them. So for relaxation, it might be that you need to spend some time meditating or going to like get a massage or something and being really intentional about that time to like really focus on what the positive things were that you got from your interaction with your father if there were any and regardless like i said you turned out fine anyway all right let's see what do we have here we've got the lunar nomad we have woman 29 mice 23 the woman here is just like making me think of and obviously i know it's not always women watching this um but it's just making me think of like the idea that you grew up and you became a mature version of yourself without needing 
the validation of this person. You maybe you never got the validation from them that you were looking for, but um, you learned how to make your own decisions and you learned how to walk away from things that you know were not good for you and you learned how to be gentle with yourself and you learned how to love yourself and how to give yourself the blessings that this person didn't give you. So yeah, I think that's really beautiful. For mice, I'm actually gonna read a little bit out of the book. Mice number 23, let's see what we've got. It's making me think of like the three blind mice even though there's only two, but there's like a big one and a little one which is like a generation thing, right? So we've got like the two generations of mice. All right, so mice here we have anxiety, worry, stress, irritation, problems, stomach issues, theft, hidden issues. The mischievous silhouettes of mice are seen on corridor walls as they silently creep through a dimly lit interior. Undetected, they move deep into the walls and burrow inside small and forgotten places. That's just making me think about how not only like your parental relationship is obviously super important, but like little pieces and things that really bother you can be hidden so deep that like you are triggered by kind of like the smallest thing and it's like where did that even come from like I'm feeling all of a sudden all these emotions that I didn't really know were there like maybe all these like resentments and anger that I didn't know was there um but it's triggered by something really really small and I think that that is especially important for those of you who are watching this pile because we did have an overwhelming majority of like really positive cards here and it's just going to show how well you have adjusted despite this and like i said there may not have been like a ton of terrible terrible moments in your childhood um some of you there may have been but for a lot of you maybe there weren't that many terrible moments in your childhood but maybe you and your dad just don't still don't have the best relationship and there could just be pieces of little things that all of a sudden just like remind you that make you sad Gnawing, gnashing, and eating away at the infrastructure, the mice are thankless takers, robbing you of valuable possessions. Yeah, the idea of like this king of swords here in reverse and the idea of like somebody being a taker is really, really sitting with me right now. Um, you know, fathers are supposed to be the people who provide for you and who give to you and who help you to feel safe and secure. And sometimes we don't get that from them. Sometimes they just take from us. It's making me think of how, um, like when people get famous or like, you know, for example, when a, um, when a, maybe like a basketball player or something, you know, finally makes it to the NBA and their deadbeat dad like comes back and is like, hey son, I'm so proud of you. Can I borrow some money? And, like, that's the only reason why they decided to come back. You know, it's sad. Um, and, like, maybe that dad was, you know, kind of helpful in, like, teaching them how to play basketball. Maybe they like, showed them how to shoot their first hoop or whatever. I don't know. Um, relentless and seldom invited, the mice find their way into the depths of our homes. Hungry gluttons taking way more than they need, their presence only discovered after the damage is done. The anatomical stomach diagram speaks to the insidious nature of negative thoughts, ideas, and beliefs. Like mice, they creep into hearts and minds, eating away at our vitality until weak spots form. Unprotected goods attract unwelcome interest from the mice, especially when left among clutter and detritus. Under the veil of your own chaos, the mice feed and nest, causing irreversible damage. So I'm also thinking with that word unprotected, it is definitely giving me like dad energy because you know unprotected sex can lead to a baby so <laughs> there may be like who knows there may be some sort of like accidental um pregnancy it may be that you find out that you were an accident or something like that you know and even if they ended up you know loving you wanting you very happy that you're here it could have been um kind of difficult you know when people aren't prepared to have a baby and then they do there's a lot of difficulties that come along with that um i'm gonna go ahead and stop reading even though there is more but it does say here that mites represent toxic thoughts emotions and beliefs that are surging through your system and shaping your reality 
Left to their own devices, these things become your ultimate destruction. You might find yourself paralyzed with fear and pain as your life falls into ruins. What toxic thoughts, feelings, or beliefs are you grappling with? Have you let them go unnoticed or unacknowledged? Now is the time to breathe awareness into those avoided places before they advance any farther. And so that definitely goes with our theme of like, what do you need to resolve? I think that there are some toxic relationship issues that you have with your dad that if you can resolve them and you want to resolve them, you should try. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to resolve them with him. You can try and do it on your own, right? Like we have this woman here, 29, like you can try and do it on your own. Um, but yeah, definitely moving past some, some daddy issues. We've got natural, authentic, real, organic, number 40. Um, this is the vampire deck, by the way, right here. So with that being said, I do feel like there is maybe an issue or like you're coming into more authenticity in yourself and maybe you don't feel like you can be authentic with your father or around your father. Um, and that could be part of what you end up kind of working on in order to fix and resolve this before the next chapter of your life. Yeah, this could also be natural beauty. Maybe um, if, if you are struggling with daddy issues, it could be that you feel the need to like look a different way than you normally do, or not than you normally do, I mean than you naturally do, um, because you feel like that's the only way to get people to like you. And if that's the case, then know that people will like you just for who you are, your natural beauty, especially with this woman here. Um, love here is also making me think about not only self-love, but like maybe having some issues in your love life due to daddy issues. So um, just practice being as authentic as you can and identify those little small triggers that remind you of your father and in in a negative way right and you work on those all right guys i'm going to go ahead and stop pile two here thank you so much for watching feel free to check out another pile if you felt drawn to it i so appreciate you subscribing thank you again and i'll see you in the next one bye Hi there, pile three. If you chose the six of cups, that means that this is your reading. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I'm super excited to get into this with you. Um, we're going to do tarot, then we'll get into these oracle cards. I did pre-pull them just for the sake of time, but I am going to live shuffle the tarot for you. So let's go ahead and get our identifiers out. This is just going to help you to check and see pile three if this reading is for you. At least one of them will probably resonate with you, but it doesn't have to. Um, and if you feel like this isn't your pile, there are five other piles for you to go choose from. So feel free to go take a look. Pile three. Who's in pile three? Who's in pile three, spirit? Who's in pile three? Anybody else? Any last people in pile three? Nope. Okay. All right. Let's see. Who do we have here? We've got Big Rich Town, 50 Cent featuring Joe. And I do just want to say, just as a reminder, you reading, the topic of this reading is what do you need to resolve before you can move on to your next chapter or like the next season of your life? We got Peanut Butter and Jelly. I just had that song. Um, Peanut butter jelly time, peanut butter jelly time, way yet, way yet. <laughs> that song just came into my head, which has never happened before when I pulled that slip. That's literally never happened before. Doug, the TV show. Do, 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 You know what I'm also thinking of for peanut butter and jelly? I'm thinking of that song, Congratulations, Smack and Katie. I forget who it's by, but in the music video, it's like a peanut butter and a jelly slice or something or like peanut butter and jelly jars and they like fall in love but their parents don't approve it's very silly reggie in the full effect that is the name of the band <laughs> that did that song congratulations smack and katie 
All right, Cardi B, she is a rapper. Randall Park, he's an actor. He was the dad on um, Fresh Off the Boat and he was also the main love interest in Always Be My Maybe on Netflix. Philadelphia, that's a city in Pennsylvania. It was originally the capital of the United States, but no longer. The Game TV show, and then I also said Jason, who's a character on The Game, and he's like notoriously cheap. Even though he's rich, he's a football player. That is about like football players and their private lives. Um, fire Signs, Aries Leo Sagittarius, so that could be your fire sign, maybe you have it in your big three. That would be Sun, Moon, Rising. Um, I'm also gonna say Venus and North Node. We've got Real Love, Mary J. Blige. That's a song. We have, ooh, Edibles. If you know, you know. We've got Footloose by Kenny Loggins. That's also a movie. That's a song, but it's also a movie. Along for the Ride, which is a book by Sarah Dessen, but it's also a movie that they did on Netflix. And then finally, we have Nice by Beyonce and Jay-Z. So if any of these are familiar to you or significant to you somehow, then that means that this is your reading. Yay. Okay, cool. Let's get into the cards. All right, pile three. I also wanted to say with our um, identifiers that there was like a power kind of a power theme. If you've seen the TV show Power, then you know that that song, Big Rich Town, um, is the theme song for Power. And then Mary J. Blige is a character, an actress on like Ghost Book 2 or something. Power, Ghost Book 2. I don't really know. Um, but yeah, so interesting. We had the Big Rich Town song and we had Mary J. Blige, uh, a real love on there. So I just wanted to say that. Oh, this one got left behind. Edibles. Interesting. Maybe that's going to have... Uh, a big effect on my reading. So yeah, pile three. What does pile three need to resolve before they can move on to their next chapter? All right, we got the Ace of Wands in reverse. Interesting. So this is something to do with the past and it could have, let's just get some more cards before I make any determinations. We've got death, the death card here in reverse. Ooh. What else, spirit? All right. We have the Fool, the Ten of Cups. Ooh, yay. And then we've got the Two of Pentacles. Anything else? Anything else for our pile of threes? Anything else? What does pile three need to move forward? We just got the Ace of Swords. Ooh, okay. I kind of... Let's see, we've got the devil here too. Interesting. All right, so I'm gonna let that be. So with this, I am gathering that what was a no in the past is actually gonna come back around. You really like, somebody really told you no. They told you it's not gonna happen, it's never gonna happen. Um, and I'm actually seeing that you're gonna get a second chance at something. You're going to get a second chance at this and this could bring you a lot of happiness um it could bring you a lot a lot a lot of happiness but i'm also getting with this two of pinnacles here in reverse that there's something like you can't have both i don't know what the other thing is <laughs> i'm definitely getting like you can't have both with um this two of pinnacles here so if you make this choice to go with this thing the second time around, it is going to give you like this feeling of like trappedness, like conscious confinement. Um, there might be some sort of like addictive behavior that goes along with it. This could be like a relapse if you previously had an addiction or some just like really negative force in your life that you were able to get rid of 
and no longer have any influence over you. That could be a person. It could be a substance. Um, if you were able to like let that go, I am seeing that there is maybe an opportunity for it to come back around. And with this Ten of Cups here, that is talking about like a family and just total emotional fulfillment and feeling like you have it all. But feelings and reality are not necessarily the same thing, okay? Um, I'm really getting here like you can't have your cake and eat it too. And I'm also going to say like you shouldn't be anything or anybody's second choice. You should not come second if like somebody really, really, really loves you and they really want to be with you. They're going to like make that known. You know, you shouldn't come second to anything. So the devil card here is worrying me for sure because we don't want to be trapped. Um, and remember, this is about moving forward into the next chapter of your life and like what do you need to resolve. And I think sometimes like the universe tests us by bringing certain things back around. And so this could be a test from your past to see if you're really ready to move to the next chapter like emotionally ready to move to the next chapter, okay? Um, and it could be that if you choose to like go with this thing, with this person that kind of rejected you in the past where it was a no before, then maybe it means that like you deserve to stay stuck. And I'm not saying that. I'm not saying you deserve to stay stuck. I'm not saying that. <laughs> but that's what the cards are saying. It could be that like if you decide to choose this thing, you deserve to to stay in this chapter. Maybe that's what it means when it's saying like you can't have both. Like you can't have progress and this person or this thing. Okay. Um, especially since like we have on the death card here, there's like this bull that he's riding. And it's just making me think like very stubborn, but also very sturdy and moving forward and like resolute. And this bull here is resolute in staying, staying there. It's not resolute in moving forward and charging ahead. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and see what emotions we've got going on here with this. All right, we have breaking free. Ooh, we're breaking free, soaring. That's from a High School Musical. And you know what's so funny is I was gonna say earlier, sorry about that glare, you guys. I really always forget that that's there. Um, I was gonna say earlier, like with our slips, there were a lot of like iconic, TV theme songs that came out. We had Big Rich Town that came out. We had Doug that came out. That was an iconic TV theme song. Um, was there another one? There was something else that made me really feel like we had like an iconic TV situation. Maybe it was the peanut butter and jelly thing because I always used to see that song, Congratulations Smack and Katie. I'm pretty sure it was on um, Nickelodeon a lot. And then Footloose. Footloose, like I said, that is a movie. So it's not a TV theme song, but it's a movie theme song. But yeah, there was like some iconic stuff. So <laughs> Breaking Free here is an iconic song from uh, from High School Musical. I don't know what that has to do with the reading yet, but I'm sure, I'm sure I'll figure it out. We've got Recognition. Look at me recognizing all these TV songs and movie songs. Recognition. All right, and then we have the future. Ooh, yeah, this is definitely like breaking free from the situation to recognize that like, if you really want to move forward into the future, like you have to let it go. Like you have to just let this go. And also the whole thing, the whole idea of like being tested, I'm gonna move these up a little bit. The whole idea of being tested is like, they always say like, well, how am I supposed to know it's how to pass the test if I don't know that I'm being tested? The universe is always testing you. And again, it's this whole thing of like, if it wasn't for you in the past and like it didn't give you signs in the past that it really was for you, maybe it was like, you're like, oh, the timing didn't work out that time, but it could work out this time. You know, I don't know how true that is. I feel like if something's meant for you, then the right time is the right time. Take that to mean what you will. But yeah, you have to recognize when you're being tested, okay? So that's what I'm getting right now. I'm gonna put this over here for the future. All right, we also have 
a couple of cards from the Lunar Nomad Oracle, and we've got Tower, that's like a disaster for sure. But it, um, that's what it means in the tarot. In this deck, I think it's more about like something sturdy and stable. And then we have here Stork with 17. Ooh, yeah. So like, okay, let's say that you decide to like get back together. If this, if this is a person, let's say you decide to get back together with this person. You could end up being trapped with like a baby. And maybe you didn't mean to have that baby. And that would like really keep you fully connected to this person forever. And maybe that was not like your intention. And I did say with the Ten of Cups, that's supposed to be like a happy family. It's supposed to feel like complete emotional fulfillment. So it could end up being that you end up, you know, deciding to go back with this person and you end up getting pregnant. And then you guys have to like move in together. And then you're going to like be together. And it's this whole thing, but you feel trapped. You feel trapped like Rapunzel in her tower. Um, so yeah, I think that before your new chapter can come in, this is going to be a test. This is going to be a test and you, you get to do whatever you want. You have free will. If you really want to be with this person, you guys could end up having like a beautiful family. You could end up having a beautiful family, but you can't have both. Whatever it is, you can't have like this freedom in the future and like move on to the next chapter and this person and this family and like this home with this person. So you kind of have to make a choice. I do see with the devil card here, like I said, there's not something like, it's not all roses and rainbows, okay? It's not all roses and rainbows here. So um, I just want you to keep that in mind. This person could have like a toxic side that you either do know or, or you haven't seen yet. And if you do know about it and you decide that you don't care, you know, you have to be prepared to live with that. <laughs> so yeah man that's what i'm seeing let's get these vampires out burnt by the sun ambition extension reach so for that it's just making me think that like if you're a very ambitious person then i think that this relationship or addiction if it is an addiction could end up killing that ambition okay um slowing it down significantly sadly We've got creator, catalyst, maker, mother, father, again, with the mother, father energy. So definitely I'm seeing the possibility of, you know, a family here. Um, I'm also seeing with the ambition and creator piece, like you might have a lot of really creative ambitions that this person would hold you back from, ultimately. There are some partners who elevate us and who really help us get where we're trying to go. And there are other partners who hold us back, okay? Um, and I'm seeing this person or this addiction as something that would hold you back, all right? So with this test, man, you gotta be careful. We got courtesy, thoughtful, polite, good manners. That's interesting. This card in this deck, the, um, like the book is always talking about how like the vampires have been alive forever and they've really recognized like how far good manners can get them and you might be surprised at how courteous and polite this predator actually is like that's literally what they're saying in the book they're like you know we know like we know we're here to kill you you know we're here to kill you like that's just what we are it's it's what we do we're here to suck the life out of you but we're gonna be really polite and courteous to you before that happens <laughs> and I'm thinking that that's the same thing with this person is like they're going to come back around or if it's an addiction, you know, somebody's going to come back around and offer you something and it's going to seem like, oh, it's going to seem like it's OK. And maybe they've changed. Maybe I've changed. And, you know, maybe it's different now and they're so nice and they're not at all the way that it used to be. But like, no, this thing is going to suck the life out of you. And this is a test. You have to pass this test before you move on to the next chapter of your life. So take that to mean what you will. You have free will. You have the ability to do what you want with your life. But remember, you can't have both. You can't have both. That's just, that's what I'm getting here. So I wish you the best. I hope that you make the right choice, whatever that means for you. And thank you so much for following me. Thank you so much for subscribing. I am so, so, so happy that you're here. To the next chapter, I wish I had like a little drink that we could cheers with, but imaginary cheers. And 
I will see you in the next one. And if you want to pick another pile, like I said, there are five other piles, so feel free to pick another one. See you later. Bye. All right, pile four. If you picked the moon card, then this is gonna be your reading. I did already pre-pull your oracle cards just for the sake of time, but I am going to live shuffle your tarot, so don't worry about that. So, oof, oh my goodness. <sighs> Six piles is a lot, I'm just gonna say that. <laughs> I'm super happy to do all this for you guys. I love doing this for you. Six piles is more than I've done before ever, so I'm hoping that these are gonna be like really super specific. Let's find out who's in pile four. Spirit, who's in pile four? These are gonna be your identifiers. At least one of them should be familiar to you, significant to you somehow, but if not, and if you don't feel like it's your right reading, you can always go and check one of the other piles. That's totally fine. Spirit, who's in pile four? Who's in pile four? Pile four. Who's in pile four? That's kind of a lot. That's kind of a lot of things. Pile four. Anything else for pile four? Anything else for power four? Okay. Anything? Anything? For some reason I got that there was like a last little one that wanted to come out, but I guess it changed its mind. All right, what do we get? We've got Death Cab for Cutie. That's a band. Lead singer Ben Gibbard. I wish I knew the other guy's names. Lemonade by Gucci Mane. That's a song. He's a rapper from Atlanta. We've got Good by Better Than Ezra. Uh-uh. It was good living with you. Chemical Hearts. That's a movie. I think it's on Netflix, but I'm not sure. It's like a teen romance slash tragedy. Drama. We'll just call it a drama. Lobster. That makes me think of Maine. Or like the Northeast and like lobster rolls. Sorry, guys. That's my dog. Cheesy Snacks. Yum. I have international, so maybe you are international, maybe you travel a lot internationally, maybe your parents are from different countries, or maybe you have like a dual citizenship or something. I don't know, it could be a whole bunch of things. Seven, that could be like a lucky number, it could be like a date that's really important to you, like your birthday is on the 7th, it could be July, um, yeah. Breakfast at Tiffany's, you could have seven people in your family, Breakfast at Tiffany's is both a novella and a movie, movie starring Audrey Hepburn. Sexy Villain by Remy Wolf. Love that song. Sexy Villain. Um, Build a Bear. Interesting. All right, so yeah, if any of these things are significant to you somehow, sorry if I'm shaking the camera, I don't mean to be. Um, if any of these things are significant to you somehow or um, they've shown up in your life recently, then that means that this is going to be your reading. So I'm going to go ahead and get our tarot cards in. Let's get into it. All right, pile four. So I do have your moon card here waiting for you. I did pre-pull your oracle cards just because it's easier for the sake of time. I haven't looked at them yet, though. So I am going to shuffle your tarot live right here right now. Let's find out. What is it that Pile 4 needs to resolve before they can move on to their next chapter? Pile 4. What does Pile 4 need to resolve before they can move on to their next chapter? Alright, we've got the Hierophant in reverse and we have the Eight of Swords in reverse. Interesting. Anything else? Pile 4. What does Pile 4 need to resolve there we go we have the empress in reverse the knight of wands in reverse that's crazy almost all these cards are in reverse that's wild we've got the ace of coins ace of pentacles and we have the sun so yeah your next chapter is definitely about to be bomb it's about to be banging um, but you have to recognize that you are, in fact, that bitch, okay? <laughs> That's what you need to resolve. You need to resolve your self-concept, okay? Um, 
and possibly some commitment issues as well. Okay. Um, I think you also need to resolve some negative ideas when it comes to like the patriarchy. Okay. Um, that bitch is gender neutral, by the way. You could be a man and be that bitch. That's fine. And if you have, if you are a man and you have to, you know, resolve some ideas around the patriarchy, that could be talking about toxic masculinity. So just so you know, all my readings, they are gender neutral. We've got the four of cups here. Um, anything else to clarify that four of cups or to clarify this reading just in general? Anything? Oh, that's a lot. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's see. Let me make some espacio here for us. We have the Ten of Cups in reverse. We've got the Nine of Cups. That's wish fulfillment right there. We've got the Three of Pentacles in reverse. We've got the World. And I have the Ten of Wands. Okay, so. This is just telling me more about, I think, like what your next chapter is going to look like, which is really exciting. It's not exactly what we asked, but still. <laughs> we love good info. We love good intel. Um, this may also look like you leaving a relationship that you've been in for a really long time or like a commitment or a contract. You could be breaking a contract. So this might be that you need to break a lease or break a contract with like a work situation. You might be leaving a marriage or just a long-term committed partnership um yeah there is just a feeling of not only coming to terms with yourself as you are but you are recognizing like or you need to recognize rather that your negative self-concept has been holding you back and it's also like there's this like impulsivity that has been holding you back as well. That impulsivity could be on your behalf or it could be on like a partner's behalf. The um, Knight of Wands in reverse can often look like somebody who is kind of like a Don Juan, who is not super faithful. Um, and... I think that you need to recognize that like you deserve better than that. You deserve somebody who ha only has eyes for you. You deserve somebody who is like going to honor your commitment and be true to that commitment um, right alongside you. And I think that having reached a point of stagnation in a relationship and kind of recognizing that like, oh, you know, this happy family stuff, like it isn't real necessarily that's not to say that there aren't happy families of course there are of course there are happy families but um every unhappy family is unhappy in its own way that was leo tolstoy at the beginning of anna karenina that is definitely a book that you should read if you're in this pile and if you are a reader um yeah i think that what you need to resolve before you move on to the next chapter is like Sometimes you have to drop baggage that isn't yours. And sometimes we're yoked to someone who is not the best person for us. And it may have been like a long and rocky road. There could have been a lot of secrets. Um, and you may have found out some of these secrets, but even if you found out some of them, I'm not getting the impression that that's everything. Okay. Um, I do think eventually everything will come to light there might be like a money issue at hand. You may get offered a new job or maybe your partner gets offered a new job um, and you guys might end up needing to move or you might need end up needing to move and it might cause the end of a relationship. But whatever it is, I do see you moving from being like happily pair bonded. And I put that in quotation marks because there are some obvious issues here. It might seem really perfect to everybody else from the outside looking in, but being on the inside, you kind of know what the real T is, right? Um, I see you going from family unit to on your own. And that's not a sad thing. It looks like you would actually prefer it that way. And family unit doesn't have to mean like, you know, 
a spouse and children, it can just mean that, like I said, maybe you were in a long-term committed relationship with someone. You might have lived with this person and you're going to strike out on your own. Um, I am seeing a third party situation here with this three of, of pinnacles here in reverse. Um, and even if that does come to an end, I'm seeing the decision, like making the decision to move on. Of course, you know, you have your own free will in this world. Everybody does. But like that would be the thing that would need to happen in order for you to move cleanly into your next chapter. So let's see if there's um, any insight that these Oracle cards are going to bring to us. I did the mermaid cards first, the emotion ones. We have free spirit. Yes, that's awesome. So that's definitely like taking, packing up and going. We got a lot of that energy here with this 10 of wands, packing up, moving on. Not staying in one place for too long. I love that. All right, we're going to do our Lunar Nomad Oracle cards next. What do we have here? We've got Whip. Ooh, very sexual. Very sexual energies. And Man. Ooh. Okay, so, yeah. I'm definitely seeing, like, this person could have anger issues. This person, um... There could be like a bondage thing going on. It doesn't have to necessarily be like bad, right? But with this um, eight of swords here in reverse, this woman is like, you know, bogged down, tied down. And I'm very much just like getting this feeling of somebody being restricted when they don't necessarily want to be, okay? And it doesn't necessarily, I'm not trying to say like somebody's keeping you captive. I don't mean that, but I am, with the, especially with this four of cups here, saying that like, it's not stimulating, it's not exciting, it's not um, as sexy as you wanted it to be, you know? Um, this could be like a dead bedroom situation for some of you. And I am seeing you, whoever you are, finding your own sexuality in this next chapter and like moving deeper into your own sexuality in this ne next chapter. We definitely, like, with having the um, Empress here in reverse, like, you're not being worshipped the way that you deserve to be in this relationship, in this situation, okay? Um, yeah, you definitely deserve more than this. And you deserve, like I said, more commitment from this person. You guys might be formally committed, but not emotionally or sexually committed, okay? And if that's what you want, then that's what you deserve, so I do see you if you decide to make this decision, moving on to your next chapter and getting exactly what it is that you want and exactly what it is that you deserve, okay? Um, and like I said, there may even be a physical move as well. Let's see what the vampires have to say. We've got Hunter here in reverse. Ooh. So yeah, um, that says aggressor, tracker, provider. Like, I do think that this person has tried to fulfill that role but they haven't done it in good faith, okay? Um, and you deserve somebody who does it in good faith. We have, and then number 32 is there. I don't know if that's significant. We've got jealousy, envy, punishment, changing course. This Knight of Wands in reverse is definitely a very jealous energy here. And jealous people often try and like make the people that they're jealous of feel bad about their good qualities because one, they're envious of them, and two, it dims your light and makes you not shine as bright, and I can definitely see that this person has tried to do that to you. Um, we have faith, trust, unwavering confidence. This is echoing that Hierophant card here, okay? So I think that you put your trust in this person, but what you need to do is you need to put yourself, trust in yourself and your confidence in yourself and like regaining your confidence. And then we have the monster within, internal struggle, personal challenges, wanting to improve. So yeah, the monster within is making me think of um, somebody who, like I said, like people may not know what goes on behind closed doors in your relationship. And if that's the case, like this person could end up being really negative behind closed doors and other people wouldn't necessarily see it. So I do think that 
you may want to try and improve this relationship and you might want to try and stay and try and, you know, figure things out. Maybe you're going to try and like spice things up in the bedroom. But in order for you to move on to your next chapter, I think you need to have more faith in yourself and your ability to make it on your own and recognize that people come into our lives for a season or reason or a lifetime. And sometimes what we thought was going to be a lifetime is actually only a season. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and leave this reading here. This free spirit energy is so, so beautiful. I am definitely wishing and hoping for that for all of you. And the fact that we got to see like what would happen in the next chapter with some of these cards is like, that didn't happen in any of the other piles. So you guys are definitely special. I think it was just a little hint to you to let you know that like if you did decide to let go of this relationship with this person and decide to trust yourself, that you would have such beautiful, beautiful things in the future um definitely who knows maybe you end up not only moving somewhere that you love but maybe you end up moving a lot you could do like a nomad thing who knows but um yeah i just love that energy for you beautiful beautiful energy thank you so much for listening thank you for subscribing i love you guys and i will see you in the next one don't feel um like you can't pick another pile you are totally able to pick another pile if another one resonated with you as well so I'll see you guys later. Bye. Hi, Pie Five. Thank you so much for being here. If you chose the Six of Swords, then this is going to be your tarot reading. I am going to get our identifiers out and then we're going to jump right into it. I do want to let you know. Um, I did already pre-pull our oracle cards just because for the sake of time I felt like it was easier that way but I haven't looked at them but you will get to see me do live shuffling of our tarot cards so before we get into that however let's go ahead and do our identifiers pile five the question today is what do you need to resolve in order to move on to the next chapter of your life or the next season of your life if this was like a TV show and they had seasons, what would you need to resolve before the next season could start? Let's see, Pile 5. Who's in Pile 5? If any of these resonate with you or they've come into your life recently, then that means that this is your reading. And if you don't like any of them or if you feel like none of them resonate for you, this could still be your reading, but you're also welcome to check the other piles as well. All right, who's in pile five? Anybody else in pile five? Anybody else in pile five, spirit? All right, that's it. Okie dokie, let's see, who's here? We've got Angus Thongs and Full Frontal Snogging. That is a book. Um, we've got Key Tattoo, so you may have a Key Tattoo. You might have read this book. You might have also seen the movie Angus Thongs and Perfect Snogging. Um, Aaron Taylor Johnson is in that one. We've got Sookie Stackhouse. She is a character from True Blood and the Sookie Stackhouse Southern Vampire Mysteries. Barney Stinson, he was a character on um, How I Met Your Mother. He also actually recently showed up in How I Met Your Father as well. That's on Hulu. Both of those are on Hulu, actually. Hide your kids, hide your wife. That's Antoine Dodson. That was from that video that went viral a few years ago. So maybe you guys like to say that. Maybe you've heard somebody say it recently. Jessica Alba, Fantastic Four, or just somebody named Jessica, since we have that in parentheses. So the name Jessica could be significant to you. Um, we've got Evermore by Taylor Swift featuring Bon Iver. It's a song from one of her, not her latest album, but one of the ones that came before. I think that that's actually the name of the album, it's Evermore. <laughs> um, we've got Matthew McConaughey, he's an American actor, he's from Texas. He thought he was going to run for governor for a minute, but I guess he decided not to. Um, Set It Off by Queen Latifah. Why do I always say that? It is not by Queen Latifah. It's starring Queen Latifah along with a few other people. I don't know why I always say that. That's so funny. So maybe you've seen a Queen Latifah movie recently. Maybe you've seen Set It Off recently. We have Monopoly. That is most likely the game, but, you know, in any context. 
Anthony Kiedis slash Remy Wolf. Anthony Kiedis is the lead singer of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Remy Wolf is an independent music artist, meaning that she doesn't have a band, um, like a, a band that she sings with, but she has a song called Anthony Kiedis. So either one of those could be relevant. We have blue or blues, meaning like the color blue or maybe like blues music, or it could be like, the blues era of Picasso. I know that he had like a whole bunch of, um, a few years where he only painted in blue. Sex in the City, that's a TV show starring Sarah Jessica Parker and others. Justin Timberlake, interesting. Interesting, I don't know why, but I totally was like getting Justin Timberlake energy earlier. Justin Timberlake's wife, her name is Jessica, but it's Jessica Biel. All right, and we have Jessica here. That's why I mentioned it. Um, Sufjan Stevens, he's also a musician. <sighs> the Postal Service, that is a band. They only came out with one album. Same lead singer as Death Cab for Cutie. Uninvited by Mallrat. Mallrat is an Australian pop star. I like that song, Uninvited. And we have Please Don't Leave Me by Pink. All right, so if any of these are significant in your life or if they've shown up recently somewhere, somehow, um, then that means that this is your reading. Like I said, if you wanna choose another pile, you're more than welcome to. There are five others, but pile five, let's get into it. I'm gonna clear the table and we're going to get started with the tarot. All right, pile five, let's see what is going to come out in our tarot. Six of Swords, that is about making a plan. It could also be about traveling. Pile five, Spirit, what do you have for Pile five? What do they need to resolve before they can move on to their next chapter? Pile five, what do they need to resolve before they can move on to their next chapter? Being a little sneaky, a little sneaky energy, interesting. Oh, that's a lot of cards. <laughs> okay. All right. So we have the King of Cups here in reverse. The Two of Pentacles. We've got the Page of Swords. The Four of Swords. I'm thinking you might need to give social media a rest with this Page of Swords and the Four of Swords next to each other. Maybe take some time to heal. We have the Eight of Wands in reverse. It's interesting, I've been thinking, like I haven't seen the Eight of Wands in forever. And this is the first time I'm seeing it and it's here in reverse, so. It could be bad news, bad message. Um, we have the Six of Wands in reverse, the Empress. That is the Emperor in reverse. Oh, interesting that they came out next to each other. That is divine counterpart energy, but something is wrong within the relationship. We've got the Queen of Swords, the Wheel of Fortune. That is the Hanged Man in reverse. We have the Seven of Cups, and we have the Three of Wands. I'm just gonna scoot these all up a little bit so you can see that a little bit better. All right interesting energy here so definitely with the empress here in the upright and the emperor here in reverse like i said divine counterpart energy um but whoever this emperor figure is they're not acting right they could be acting very controlling um kind of like a tyrant i'm getting um emotionally manipulative especially here with this king of cups here in reverse um with the queen of swords that is like making a choice to be single making a choice to move on by yourself and i'm seeing that as soon as you do that the wheel is actually going to turn for you meaning that your luck is going to start to get a lot better and a changed perspective that being single will bring to you is going to end up being very valuable and allow you to like start off on a new journey. So 
I want to say that this does not have to mean like you're in a relationship. You don't have to be in a relationship, like a formal relationship for this to happen. This could be a person who you have been in a situationship with. It could be somebody who you've been kind of on and off with. The energy has been inconsistent, um, especially with the eight of wands here in reverse. You know, that is supposed to be like very fast moving energy, a lot of messages back and forth. But with it being here in reverse, that can be talking about like inconsistency. Okay. Um, sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad. A lot of ups and downs. Okay. Um, we have the six of wands here in reverse. And I'm also seeing that like this person could be a secret hater. Like they might have been hating on you in secret. They could be gossiping about you to other people, especially with the page of swords here. Um, I'm seeing that you may need to like make a plan to leave this person. It might take you a little bit longer than you like. Um, and I'm not like hinting or insinuating that this person is abusive or whatever. I just think that it is, um, ultimately like they've sold you a dream that they are not able to sold you a dream that they're just not able to actually like bring to fruition okay they're not able to like deliver what they've promised okay so if that's the case then you need to find somebody who can deliver what they've promised you definitely deserve that um the moon is showing up in a lot of these, a lot of these cards here in the Six of Swords, the Two of Pentacles, this Page of Swords, this Six of Wands here. And so that's just making me think that there are a lot of secrets. I kind of think that you don't know this person as well as you think you do, especially or even if you guys have, you know, known each other for a really long time, you don't know them as well as you think that you do. And there's like a secret hidden person part to their personality even with this two of um two of pinnacles here they, they could be juggling two different people um or it could just be talking about like the duality like of the two sides of them like they're kind of like two people mood swings i'm also getting here now as well um one or both of you could have you know two different streams of income one of which could be like a secret stream of income interestingly enough um yeah i think that like there's a lot of shadow this person has like a really dark side to them and i think that you didn't see that before especially since we have the um hanged man here in reverse and you're kind of like just now starting to see you're just now starting to see it it could have even been like in the last 10 months or so that you've started to see this about this person. I'm getting that because of this Wheel of Fortune here. Um, so like the last 10 months to a year, because we have 10 to 12. The last 10 months to a year, you could have started to see like a different side to this person and it's one that you don't really like, you know. Um, sometimes we have to let go of, of people in our lives. And as soon as we do that, we make space for somebody new to come in. And I'm kind of getting that here with this person. So <clears throat> you may have to have a conversation with them in order to try and, you know, like resolve the situation. And you're free to do that. You know, again, you have free will. But if it turns out that you and this person aren't able to, you know, come to an accord with this two of cups here, you're not able to come to an accord, then that means that you're just not in the same headspace. You know, um, we have the emperor and the empress here, but they're not in the same headspace. And so if that's the case, sometimes you just gotta cut them loose. You gotta cut them loose, be queen of swords, and figure out how to be okay on your own. I don't think it's gonna be that hard, but you know, it's a different situation for everybody. So let's see what else is coming out in our reading. I have these emotions cards here 
from these queen uh, from the from the mermaids. Sorry. <laughs> so we have dive deep. Interesting. So you and this person could have had like a really deep relationship, really deep understanding of each other. That's why I said divine counterpart energy with the empress and the emperor here, because you guys might have like really had a very very deep relationship. Hope interesting yeah so there's this whole thing like i said about how like you can try and talk to this person about it and with this four of swords here we have um like this these the stained glass window in the back and there's like these kind of like rays coming off of this crow and so i think you're kind of feeling like maybe if i just like chill out or like let it lie let it rest like everything is gonna be okay so i think you do kind of have some hope for this connection but you and this person are just not thinking the same. You're not in the same headspace. Miracles, interesting. So there is a possibility that, you know, maybe a miracle will happen, but the miracle could also just be like you finally letting go of this connection and changing your pace. And once you do that, you'll have the ability to, to move forward. We have the six of wands, not six of wands. We do have six of wands here in reverse, but we have the six of swords and three of wands which are both like traveling cards so the miracle could be and this girl looks like she's the same girl honestly it looks like she's the same girl i don't know you guys tell me if i'm wrong but i'm pretty sure that's the same mermaid she's like sitting on a rock here on this one and this one she's like swimming through the sea with all her little ocean friends so I'm kind of thinking it's like once you get up off this rock, get up off, you know, this place that you've been sitting in, you're going to go travel and find all kinds of new friends. All right, let's see. What does the Lunar Nomad Oracle have to say? We have bouquet number nine. Yeah, <clears throat> this is like going about and smelling the roses here. This person may try to appease you. They really might, um, they might try to, you know, like send you flowers and stuff like that. And you're welcome to, you know, accept them back if you want. I'm not saying accept them back like you like already kicked them out of your life, but you're welcome to, you know, try and explore it. But ultimately, I'm just going to tell you, you guys are not in the same headspace, not in the same headspace. Um, you don't want the same things, I don't think. So sometimes when you find out what it is that you want, you have to just move on by yourself. But this is about smelling the roses and getting out in the world and decorating your home and finding the beauty in the things around you. Um, I am going to read a little bit from that book, actually. Let me see if I can find it. Uh-oh. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Okay, bouquet, number nine, gifts, offerings, affection, encouragement, happiness, and aesthetic. A curtain parts revealing a bouquet of exuberant blooms. Luscious roses burst with soft velvet petals that spill into the room with sweet and sensuous perfume. The atmosphere is grand. Elegant fabrics, carved statues, and the blushing flowers of soft canary, apricot, and coral. The dramatic vessel that holds the bouquet gives the impression that this is a gesture of deep love, affection, and admiration. An offering of flowers warms the heart and lifts the spirit. Each intoxicating inhalation of flowers is a kiss of love wooing you deeper. When someone gives you flowers, it is a sign of affection, an acknowledgement of their deep feelings and appreciation for you. Accepting such a gift as a bouquet can feel like opening a door. You might wonder what motives lie behind such a kind gesture. Admiration and affection have a way of drawing us out in some instances, but can also cause us to retreat. What intention is behind this offering? What message are you sending by accepting? So I think that that's really important because, like I said, I think this person has a tendency to be emotionally manipulative. And I think there are good and bad times, a lot of mood swings in your connection with them. And so I would not be surprised if this person kind of like feels you pulling away and decides that they want to try and like woo you back. But sometimes we do have to kind of question like what is the person's motive behind a gesture and then if i accept this gesture is that me you know giving them a good signal or a bad signal is it saying more than i intend for it to say if i accept this gesture so you really have to consider that 
when you're dealing with this person. Because when I say things like you guys are not in the same headspace, like this person could be, you know, trying to control you through gifts or whatever it may be. They could be trying to control you, even if the gifts are kind of like inconsequential. They could still be trying to, you know, get you stuck in a place that is not healthy for you, ultimately. Um, I'm going to read a little bit more. The bouquet holds the vibrant spirit of love that works its way through heads and hearts to awaken desire and set the stage for a spell of affection. Romantic connections and blessings flourish in the allure of love's benevolent spirit. Fill your heart with gratitude for this kind and gentle gesture. The bouquet signif signifies a connection you've made. Touching someone on such a deep, intimate level and having that affection to be reciprocated is a precious gift. And I do want to say, like, I've talked about you guys being divine counterparts with this person. And I said that you've shared a deep connection. I said that. So I understand how special that can be. But people can come into our lives for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. And we have to remember what is, like, the question that we came in here with. The question was, what do you need to resolve before you can move on to the next chapter. If this person is not willing to like literally show up and give their all every last single ounce of what they have emotionally and even beyond that to you, then you need to cut it loose and let it go so you can move on. Because in both of these cards here, we have a single figure. I know traditionally on the Six of Swords, there are three figures, but in this deck, there's only one. There's one person in the boat. There's one person here. So I've said before, this person is like selling you dreams of a, of a future and a reality that are not real. And they're trying to do it through like reminders of, you know, the deep connection that you guys have and gifts and stuff like that. Or lovely flowery language that is making you think and feel a lot of different things. Trying to give you hope. For the future but that future that they're trying to pretend that you guys have together it doesn't exist and i think you're finally figuring that out and i'm sorry to be so harsh but sometimes we need a little bit of a rude awakening um yeah i am going to go ahead and get our vampire card this is going to be our last card for this reading let's see what it says resurrection reprise recovery and comeback so yeah I think once you um, are able to move forward from this connection and kind of recognize that this person isn't all that they've said that they are going to be for you, they haven't, you know, held up their end of the bargain, they haven't been and done all the things that they said they were supposed to do, especially as a divine counterpart, you're going to end up resurrecting yourself and you're going to end up like really having a great, great time. We have this Wheel of Fortune here, which is just like about your luck getting so much better and you really attracting a lot of like really beautiful, amazing things into your life. I'm also thinking like Atlanta could end up being, um, maybe you'd like take a trip there or something, but I just am like seeing ATL here in this card here too. I don't know what that's about, but um, yeah, resurrection, comeback. That's exciting. It's like a sports, I feel like sports for some reason. I don't know. I don't know what that's about. It's like the comeback kid. How, I, I don't know what that is, but maybe you do. Um, regardless, I'm super excited for you. I, again, remind you that you have your own free will if you decide that you want to stay in this connection and that like the gifts and the false promises are enough for you. Then you know what? Cool. <laughs> that is totally fine. Everybody has their own free will. Everybody can make a connection. And ultimately, I'm never going to know what choice you make. So, you know, don't do it for my sake. Do whatever you choose to do for your own sake and the thing that makes you feel the best. So I love you. I wish you the best. Thank you so much for being here. I hope that my advice and this guidance and this tarot reading was not too harsh. But remember, I love you. You are able to pick another pile if you so choose. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>
pile six, let's see, what is it that you need to resolve before you can move on to the next chapter or the next season of your life? So I did pre-pull our um, oracle cards for the sake of time, but I am gonna do a live shuffle for the tarot. But first and foremost, we need to get our identifiers out. So this is gonna help you to identify if this reading is for you. If you don't like any of these or if none of them resonate, then that means you can definitely go check out another reading, but this still could be the reading for you if your intuition told you so. So let's find out. Spirit, who's in pile six? Who's in pile six? What are the identifiers for pile six? Pile six. Who's in pile six? Identifiers for pile six. Anybody else in pile six? Anybody else in pile six? Alrighty. And we're going to leave it there. Oh. That last one wanted to come out. Anybody else? All right. Okay. I just like to do an extra spin just to make sure sometimes I think it, we want to make sure everybody gets the reading that they deserve. All right. So let's see. I've got 12, 12. So that could be a time. It could be a date. The date would be December 12th. We've got Casino by Houndmouth. That's a song, kind of like a country rock song. Um, Dealers in my bootlegs got me hooked on free basin and I can't trust my government or whatever she says. Um, it's a good one though, but you should check into it. Privacy, that one just came out. Let's see, privacy is very important. We don't have a lot of it these days. Aang from Avatar The Last Airbender. He's the protagonist, the main character. We've got Honey Bee by the Head and the Heart. I apologize, you guys. That is definitely my dog crying. He wants me to play with him. We've got the number five. So that can be the month of May. It could also just be um, like your lucky number. It could be an important day, like the fifth of a month. Five years since you started doing something or five years until something happens and play like something important. Um, like 50th anniversary just came to mind for some reason. West Africa, Nigeria, Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, and Benin. So maybe you're from there. Maybe you're planning on taking a trip out there. We've got No Frauds by Nicki Minaj, Drake, and Lil Wayne. Are there any others? Any others that I missed? I don't think so. I think that's it, pile six. All right. So these are going to be our identifiers. I'm going to clear the deck so that we can get into the tarot. All right, pile six. If you chose the page of wands here in reverse, this is the rest of our tarot reading. So let's see, let's see what we got. Spirit, what does pile six need to resolve before they can move into the next chapter or the next season of their lives? Pile six, what's the message for pile six? Oh, uh-oh, it just all fell on the floor. They did fall face up, so we're gonna take them. All right, we got the 10 of pentacles. Ooh, that's like wealth, legacy. Six of swords, that's like a plan or maybe traveling, possibly traveling overseas. We got the seven of wands here. That could be sales. Um, that is also maybe just like standing up for yourself, having the confidence to stand up for yourself. We've got the hanged man. The six of wands, interesting, we seven of wands, six of wands. So it's like a change of perspective makes you go from feeling alone and like everybody's against you to feeling like you are like the hero of the community. Interesting. Um, we have the Knight of Wands. There's a lot of Wands energy in here right now. Six of Pentacles. The Queen of Pentacles in reverse. Interesting. So I'm actually not going to pull any more cards. I'm going to leave it like that. Let's see if we can uh, get rid of that glare for you guys. All right. Yeah. I'm liking this message. I think that 
you are interested in creating some sort of a legacy for yourself in either this chapter or the next chapter of your life, I think that it's kind of like an ongoing thing. I think that's probably going to be for like the next several chapters or the remainder of the book if we're talking about, you know, chapter of a, chapters of a book. Um, but you're going to have to leave behind some like immaturity, okay? I think that you have a little bit of growing up to do if you want to actually make this happen. And I think it could happen. I think it can happen for you, but you have to change your perspective and you have to grow up a little bit. And by that, I mean, sometimes you might get really defensive. You might kind of feel like you're better on your own. You might feel like um, everybody's against you or nobody is there to support you. Um, it might just be like you only have one friend or like your only friend is your dog or your only friend is your partner or, you know, something like that. Um, and you kind of are going to change your mind and realize that like, oh, I actually need to like go out and make more connections. I actually need to tap into my network. You know, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. Right. And so maybe you've been going fast recently, but you haven't gotten towards anywhere close to where you want to go. And so you kind of have to recognize that you you need more people. You, you need a team. And in order to be a leader, nobody wants to follow a childish person, except for maybe like the Lost Boys from Peter Pan. And even then it's in their name. They're Lost. Lost Boys, right? Um, if you want to get to where you're going of this legacy, you really are going to have to change your perspective and start taking the lead a little bit more. You are gonna to have to be more adventurous. You're gonna to have to get out from behind the barriers that you've put in front of yourself. Like, do you see how this person here has this fence in front of them? And then here they're like out. They're out and about. They're out and about in the wild and they're finding what works and, and finding what doesn't work. And this could be some trial and error, but most importantly, it's about taking action. You have to get out of where it's safe and you've got to take a risk. So that's exciting. This might actually end up being something like that really helps the community, that helps other people. It could be charitable. It could be, um, it could be, you know, finding a way to help people financially and if not financially maybe it's in terms of like helping with housing or helping with clothing or helping with something that people need and you're helping to be able to supply that for them or to provide that for them in some way you might have a dream of you know once you have that legacy wealth you're able to you know maybe start a foundation or a charity or something like that um but i think that you have some knowledge that you need to gain and some some satisfaction that you need to reach like you're not satisfied with with what you're doing right now in terms of trying to to reach that dream and so you have to change your mindset we are starting off with the page of wands in reverse and we're ending with the queen of pentacles in reverse so not only do you have to kind of like change modalities meaning from wands to pentacles from pure passion to more practicality and more groundedness but you also have a lot of growing to do the page is somebody who's still just learning we go from page to night night is about exploring and conquering and then we go to queen and the queen is receiving the queen has all the satisfaction has everything she needs and more and she's the one you know out here directing certain projects and the queen in reverse here, this queen of pentacles, especially in reverse, is very unsatisfied. There may even be, you know, some selfish aspects to her, um, an unrealistic view of how to, you know, get everything that she wants. She kind of just thinks that, like, maybe there's some entitlement here. Everything should be handed to her. Meanwhile, a queen in her upright recognizes how much work whether it's her own work or, you know, the work of her, of her subjects that goes into putting her in the position she wants to be in. And I think that this queen here in reverse is not recognizing 
how much work needs to be put in, how much risk needs to be taken, whether that risk is on her behalf or, I mean, is by her or by somebody else on her behalf, right? So this is about becoming a leader and becoming a respectable leader, okay? So yeah, you have some mindset shifts to do. You need to make a plan. Six of Swords here is about making plans. You gotta make a plan. Um, and that plan can't just be for, you know, a year in the future, five years in the future, 10 years in the future. Legacy is about generations. We're talking generational. So you have to start thinking about, well, my kids, my kids' kids, my kids' kids' kids, if that's what you want. And if that's not what you want, if you don't want children, you could be thinking about the community, right? With the six of pounds, six of pounds, six of pentacles here. Um, pounds, I don't know why I just said pounds. Maybe this has something to do with like the UK or Great Britain or whatever, but you could be thinking about like, well, in, you know, 50 years, I want my community to look like this. And I want my, uh, you know, neighbors in my neighborhood to have this in it. I want to have my name on a building at this school or whatever, right? So you have to start thinking about that. And if you're thinking about it, then that's going to help you to figure out, well, where do I start? But you can't play it safe. You can't stay inside the fence forever. At some point, you're going to have to go beyond the fence. Go beyond the fence, adventure, see what's out there, and see what you can do and how you can help other people. So taking action towards this goal is going to be just like the biggest thing that you need to do. Making a plan. This might be a business plan. It could just be a personal plan. Um, but yeah, you have to grow your mindset. You've got to change your perspective, grow your mindset, make a plan. And from there, you'll be able to actually start enacting the plan, which I think is going to be the next chapter of your life. So let's see what is coming out with our Oracle cards. We're going to do our mermaid card first. And that says be spontaneous. What did I say? I was talking about taking action with this Knight of Wands here. Be spontaneous. Got to get outside of that comfort zone and, you know, just take some action. Just do something. Anything. Doesn't have, I mean, it might not be what you expect, but do something. Do something about it. Um, we're going to take our lunar nomad oracle cards next we've got and she's giving me very regal energy too she's like sitting here in this shell chilling but it says be spontaneous so maybe this this bubble has something important inside of it i don't really know but you could be spontaneous from your house i guess um fish look at this this is such underwater energy fish Fish are very wishy-washy, okay? That's like a lot of wishy-washy energy. So you might just like be really indecisive. We can have a lot of indecisiveness here. Um, clouds, six. So that, it's about like having your head in the clouds. So yeah, this is definitely like I said, giving kind of like immature energy. And I'm not saying immature to like be mean, but sometimes when we don't know enough, we just have like I heard somebody say, um, you want master's level results with a preschool mindset, like preschool knowledge. <laughs> and I'm getting that here. I'm definitely getting that here. You know, you have a lot to learn. We've got shears, number 10. And this could be about cutting out bad habits, but it's also making me think of, um, I said earlier, like you might be giving clothes to people in the community or something like that. So you, I don't know why it's making me think seamstress. Um, if you've seen, I don't know if you've seen that show Designing Women, I haven't seen it in such a long time, but that show, there might be some, um, there might be some interesting lessons in there for you because, um, it's like about a, a woman who owns, a I want to say like dressmaking business or something. And, you know, she's in Atlanta. I want to say it's like in the seventies or the eighties and she's doing it, doing what needs to be done. She's taking care of business. Okay. So you might learn something from her <laughs> if you watch that show i'm gonna read some of these um messages from these books let's see we've got fish what does fish have to say to us money Ooh, ooh okay money success small business here we go freedom movement luck prosperity and then also i want to say fish does remind me of school so like a school of fish so it could be reminding you like not only that you need to learn something but there may actually be like a formal education or an informal one that you need to go through so this could be about like a certificate it could be a degree it could be 
um, just, you know, taking notes about something and learning it really in depth. I did say like, you want master's level results with a preschool level of knowledge or whatever. So it might be that you need to, you know, go pursue another degree or something. Glittering rhinestone fish swim through clear waters. Treasures aplenty lie waiting at the bottom of this vast ocean. You could wait for wealth to float to the top or dip down into unknown waters and pull up your supply of abundant riches to finance your wildest dreams. Guys, why am I so good at this? <laughs> I just have to say, you know what? Thank you, spirit. I love when I get the message loud and clear. Um, life is filled with pockets of discovery. Some people seem to have all the luck and the intuitive knack for just knowing where to find out what, find out what they need. It comes so easy to them that it seems like goodness follows them, while other people search for their bounty with no success. If you look closer, you will find that successful people understand the currents of prosperity. There is always a time to fish and a time to rest, a time to make change and a time to cash in on a good thing. Abundance like fish is in motion, fluidly, fluidly moving through life. Step into the current, ride the wave, and move with abundance. The fish will lead you where riches can be found. Okay. Yes. And they're also saying you need to ask yourself, am I living in healthy or stagnant water? Um, have you been floating through life waiting for your big break? Expecting miracles is a wonderful stance to take, but stay engaged. If something bites at the line, you have to reel it in to capitalize on the catch. Seek out prosperity and you will find it. Give abundantly and you will receive abundance. So yeah, I mean, we talked about the charity aspect, about giving to others, but we also talked about how you need to go out, explore, take a risk. They're saying if something bites on your line, you have to reel it in. If you have a great idea, be spontaneous and act on it, okay? See what happens. Let's check clouds number six. What does clouds say? Do, 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 do. Clouds, sex, confusion, conflict, lack of focus, obstacles, worries, and depression. So yeah, I think like the whole idea of being confused and not knowing where to start is definitely um, here with this page of wands in reverse, but you're going to get a perspective change for sure. Lack of focus is also very much page of wands in reverse, okay? That's like a kid who's had too much sugar and can't figure out what's going on. An antique glass atomizer puffs heady clouds of exotic perfume about the parlor. Intoxicating ylang ylang hangs heavy in the air with lingering bergamot. In this complex olfactory haze, you grow dizzy, verging on forgetful. You are entranced by the seductive persuasion of this luscious perfume. As the clouds swell about your mind, your thoughts become muddy. Addled by some outside persuasion, you lose your sense of direction and slip into a silent paralysis. Staggering through the haze could lead to freedom or detriment, depending on what you find in your midst. But maybe you will succumb to the confusion and float in the plumes for a while. <sighs> confusion has a way of multiplying, right? So they're saying like, you really need to get clear. Six of Swords is all about clarity. It's all about creating a plan, and sticking with it. You know, this person's in a boat. They can't, like, once they get in the boat, they have a play idea of where they're trying to go. They can't just stop in the middle of the river, in the middle of the ocean, in the middle of the lake. They have to go all the way to the other side. Okay? So even if there's in fog, they are in fog here. They are in fog, but they know they have to keep going. Okay? So you need to find your clarity. And that these shears are here to help you cut through, cut through the bullshit so that you can get to the things that make it clear. Let's read shears. Cutting, severing ties, surprise, quick ending, breakup, or surgery. Heavy old industrial sewing shears glint with almost ominous blades, forged by hand to last a lifetime of altering, removing, and transforming. Yards of fabric become elegant garments with a few precise cuts of the shears, or a finger can be nicked with carelessness, causing excruciating pain. Wielding the shears is a great responsibility that should be done with care and consideration. They can be weapon or tool, but danger becomes opportunity with the right attention. The shears signify the power of intention and action. We've been talking about that. Sorry, y'all, my camera died for some reason. I don't know what just happened, but 
The battery's not even low. We're on 77%. Um, but I was saying that it says intention and action. Conscious actions guided by clear intentions can lead to wonderful discoveries and possibilities, while lack of attention and awareness lead to detriment and danger. Holding the shears in your hand is a point of power, the power to create, destroy, harm, or heal. As you meet the sharp edge of the shears blades, you come in contact with your personal dark and light. Accepting the shadow self is an alchemical process of claiming power and perspective. Even when someone else holds the shears and circumstances seem bleak, remember you always have a choice. Yes, circumstances are out of your control, but your reaction to experience is always under your role. All right, so I'm definitely thinking that this is, again, Six of Swords here, creating a plan of action and then actually acting on it with this Knight of Wands here. Um, you really have such an opportunity with whatever this idea is that you may have, but I think that you have to actually claim your power. You have the power to be this Queen of Pentacles upright, but right now it looks like you're going to be Queen of Pentacles reverse. Maybe like wasteful instead of abundant and multiplying like you should be. So we are going to get our last few cards here. We got our vampire cards. I see witness to know, personal evidence to speak out. Personal evidence is speaking to me right now, so that's the idea of like taking notes about something but maybe also like you're watching a whole bunch of other people who have found their success and you're thinking like i could do that too but for some reason you just haven't found it yet um main all right guys i don't know what keeps happening i don't know why this keeps happening but my camera turned off again we're still at that same 76 77 percent regardless main ad madness ecstatic ritual energy release you cannot hide in the shadows anymore you have to release the energy that you have and move in a way that is authentic and exciting to you. We have anti-hero. So this is Maverick, Risk Taker, Rule Breaker. And I don't remember like which way I put these down, so I'm just going to take both of them upright. Um, yeah, Risk Taker, got to take some risks if you want to succeed. Got to take some risks. And then maybe you're going to do something nobody else has ever done before. Her last day in the light. Unexpected endings, surprise changes, sudden shifts. So I'm definitely thinking that you can change your life very dramatically, but you have to be open to the unexpected. We have that be spontaneous here, right? You have to be open to the unexpected, a sudden shift, surprise change. This is so exciting. Pile six, I'm going to go ahead and cut it off here since my camera, I don't want my camera to cut it off for me. But I love you guys. Feel free to pick another pile if you feel drawn to. And thank you so much for being here. I love you and I will see you soon. Bye. Bye.